Welcome back crafty friends. Today we're going to be making these index cards. They're quite quick to make and super fun and do watch till the end of the video so you can see what I'm going to do with the six cards that I make. I start with using plain cards. They're known as flash cards or index cards. They're plain on the one side, they've got lines on the other side and they're of a thicker cardstock. I wasn't quite sure what colors I was going to use so I pulled out all my inks but I ended up starting with this blue and what I'm doing is I'm just tabbing uh, the pad onto an acrylic block and then putting a spray of water and then I just smush the um, card onto the acrylic block to let it pick up the color. I really love using this technique because it's quite exciting to see what designs are going to come up when you pull the card up. This technique can be used with these ink pads, spray inks, acrylic paints, watercolors, any kind of color that you have. Dry well between each layer of color. The next color I'm going to use is called Vintage Photo. It's also an ink pad and I'm doing the same technique. I will have a list of products that I've used in the description below. If you notice, I dry the acrylic block before I press the ink pad down on it again. I just use a tissue and this is to avoid getting water onto the ink pad. If you're not new to my channel, you know that I use gesso in most of my projects. For this one, I have refrained from using any gesso and I'm going to keep these colors bold. I'm going to use the Vintage Photo Color ink to distress the edges. I'm now going to add some stamping. I've got black ink and I've got my script stamp. And the reason I'm doing it first onto the paper is that I don't want the color too dark on my index card. So I tend to press it into the ink pad and then press it once on the scrap paper and then onto my index card. So I sort of get a bit of a lighter effect. As it's going with a vintage feel, I have these vintage bus tickets that I'm going to use as the tab for the index card. I'm just cutting two, folding it in half, and then I will attach it to each card. Before I glue or stitch anything down, I'm going to work on the decoration of the card. I'm going to work on one card first until I get the elements the way I want them, and then I can copy that on the other cards. When I make embellishments for my index cards or my altered playing cards or any of my junk journals, I like to do sort of like a little stack, a little cluster of elements that I think are a good focal point. Sometimes you have to try a few different things. Not everything you put down the first time will work. It's just about creating the balance and something that's pleasing to the eye. And like I've said before in other videos, sometimes it can work in 30 seconds, other times you can take 30 minutes to make a cluster work. But do have fun while you're doing it, enjoy it, and just try and experiment with different things. I feel it needs a little bit of a lighter element to make the embellishment stand out more. So I have this lighter piece of cardstock with the vintage like flower print on that I'm putting down first, then the piece of brown paper. I'm also using some cheesecloth, some black thread, and then my round disc, which I'm now going to just frame or edge with a black watercolor pencil. I just pop the tip of the pencil in some water and just go around the edge just to make it stand out a little bit more. I'm happy with my little cluster, so now it's a little bit of a mass production. I prepare five of everything from the cluster, which I'll use then on the other five cards. This gorgeous paper with the numbers is a Tim Holtz paper pad, the collage pad. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love these numbers. And I'm just using my round one and a half inch punch to just punch through um, a few, just trying to sort of get the number in the middle of the circle very roughly and I think it's really quite effective. Yeah. <laughs> 
To attach the bus ticket to the card, I'm just going to run it under the sewing machine. I like the bunched look of the thread, so I normally take a separate piece of thread and just run it underneath the foot of the sewing machine while it's sewing, so it can catch that thread and it gets that bunched up look, which I really like. I'm going to use hot glue to adhere everything to the index card. Now what exactly am I going to do with six of these almost identical cards? Well, I've decided that I want to give them to you, if you'd like to have them. So I have six in total, I will keep one for myself for reference, and then the other five I'll give them out to five different people as a little gift from me to you. On Friday the 26th of February, I will do the selection, the random selection of the five names, and I will post them at the top of the description of this video. Please do come back and check. I have no way of notifying you that you've been selected as I don't have your email address or any of your details. I only have your YouTube name, which doesn't have your email address. So just do check back and just have a look in the description. If you do see your name there, just send me an email. I will have the details of that as well. It'll be shinooki at hotmail.com and then I'll get your address and then I can post you your index card. I'm happy to post the index card anywhere, internationally, it doesn't matter where your location is, just note that I am posting from Australia, so if you're not in Australia, do allow additional time for you to receive your index card. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see all of my videos that are coming up. I also have the full deck challenge on the go. If you'd like to have a look at that, I'll put the link in the description below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you learned something new or got inspired to create your own masterpieces. I'll see you again soon. Bye.